Welcome. Today we're going to talk about distributive property and we're also going to talk about uh, combining like terms, which is really the same thing. Uh, combining like terms is uh, one of the components of distributive property, even though sometimes we don't really talk about it together. We should. Um, distributive property, of course, was covered in the last section, in the last lesson, I should say. And it's when you have the whole... Um, nice if I picked a color that wasn't the background color. Um, you have a quantity multiplied by a number on the outside. So in this case, I'll do 4 times 3x and get 12x, and then I do 4 times positive 2 and get plus 8. That's a distributive property. Now, the precursor to that is simply combining like terms. And the idea of like terms is not only uh, Regular numbers or numbers without variables are like terms. 3 plus 2 is a like term. So 3 and 2 in that case are like terms. So 3, 2. If I'm adding them, it just 3 plus 2. No problem. Um, terms with the same variable and exponent values are also like terms. So x and 4x, if it says to subtract them, I'm going to combine them in the way that it says. So I do 1 minus 4, which gives me, of course, negative 3 x. Um, also, x squared plus x. But the reality is, just because they have the same letter does not mean that they're like terms. x squared is a two-dimensional construct. It's like x times x. So you really can't combine it with x. These are apples and oranges. So x squared plus x can't do anything except repeat itself. x squared plus x. Now, I can combine if I, if I have a long version of 3x squared minus 2x plus 5x squared minus 3, what I need to do is combine terms that are alike. And what I'm going to do to do that is just mark them up. Usually for me, if they have the same letter, or there's only one letter here, I'm going to make two marks for any x squared. I'm going to make one mark for any x's. So my x squares would be here and here. I've got one mark for my x, and this minus 3 sort of stays by itself. So in order to combine them, I need to look at the sign in front of the numbers and not behind. So when I combine 3x and 5x squared, this minus in front of the 2x right there has nothing to do with anything. It's not related. So I look at 3 plus 5, and I get 8x squared. Uh, since there's no other x terms, I just bring down negative 2x and then minus 3. Let's do some sample problems. I think it'll make a lot more sense uh, once we get to that point. And there's a different types of questions that'll be on the assignment. Um, here's one of them. First, I'm going to change colors. Um, n plus 3 minus 8n minus 7. So I'm going to do my little marking up strategy. I noticed that there's only one letter there, so it's n. If there was an x and an n, I would not combine those together by adding or subtracting. Uh, but I'm going to mark up the n and the 8n. Uh, I could combine these two. 1, if you don't see a number in front of the n, it means it's 1n. So I do 1 minus 8, and I get negative 7n. And then I do 3 minus 7, which of course gives me negative 4. So I can't do anything else with it. That's as far down as it will go. I'm going to check my work to see that I'm correct, and I am. Good. Sometimes I start off a little slow. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't mess this one up. Um, the next one, and hopefully I can change it over to purple and it'll work. We'll see what happens. Um, I have the P there and then the integer terms or the number terms. Um, so there's no other variable terms, so I just bring it down. Always put the, uh, them in standard form, by the way, your answers. And standard form means that uh, the numbers with the variables with the largest exponents go first. So if there's an x to the third power, it goes before x squared, which goes before x, which goes before regular integer number answers. Then I combine my 10 and 7, so 10 plus 7 is positive 17, so I put plus 17. Really, really simple. See if I can get one that's a little bit more complicated than that, but not really. Pretty simple, pretty simple. This, of course, would be 8 plus 1, so you get 9x for that one. And these are both negatives. My negative 4 minus 6, since they're both, I could mark both of them up, and I end up getting negative 10k here. Uh, from there, we're going to expand that concept out and combine the two ideas together, all of distributive property. So we're going to start doing some distributive, and then we're going to start doing um, the combining like terms part. The reality is you have to do distributive first. Even though it says that negative 3n pops up first, parentheses win. So in this case, distributive property wins. I'm going to just bring this down. 
Then I do three times n, so it gives me plus three n. Then I do three times five and gives me plus 15. Then I can do my combining like terms. In this case, my n values actually cancel out because negative three plus three gives you zero. So I mean, in theory, it would be zero n plus 15, but nobody writes zero n. So your final answer to that question is just 15. And let me make sure that's right because that seems so suspect. I, it's unbelievable to me. Oh, it is. I guess I should trust my own judgment more, huh? Makes you feel really confident about my ability. Either way. Um, in this one, uh, the 6m, I'm just going to break it down because I can't use it yet. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. Negative 7 times 1m. It really is helpful if you write the 1 there as you get used to it. If you're really good with it anyway, don't worry about it. But negative 7 times 1, and remember I said before that this is minus. I'm going to treat it like it's negative 7. That way it makes it easier. I don't end up with this weird bring down signs, have a million mixed signs. So I don't bring down my plus automatically. I look at what the problem says. It says negative 7 times 1, so I put minus 7 M. Now I can combine my like terms together. Uh, that minus 21 thing is just going to drop. And then I get negative 1m minus 21. And they, it would probably show up negative m minus 21 if it was multiple choice. But not always multiple choice, so it is what it is. Um, that one's pretty much the same. Let's do this one. That negative 2x, of course, we're just going to drop that down. Then I've got 10 times 7, and it gives me 70. 10 times 2x gives you 20x. So I'm dealing with combining like terms now, here and here. Negative 2 plus 20 gives you plus 18x. And then just bring down your plus 70. Pretty simple. Let's look at one that is a little bit more advanced. Here's one that has a double distributive in it. You have to do the distributive separately and then do all the combining at the end. So I'm going to start with the distributive on the left. This is a minus 4, so I'm going to say negative 4 times 5, which is of course negative 20 n. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Then I do plus 3 times positive 9 gives me plus 27. And then I do plus 3 times negative 7, which is of course negative 21 in. So combine these together. Uh, my negative 20 minus 21 here will end up uh, leaving me with negative 41 in. And then negative 8 plus 27 gives me negative 19. So let's see if I actually got that one correct. And if I didn't, we'll figure out why. Nope, I was right. I think. Yes. Okay. No, I wasn't. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I messed this up. I'm sorry. Don't do what I did. So you can see that it's pretty easy to mess them up if you're not paying any attention. This is 27 minus 8, so it should be plus 19. So if you caught that, good on you. Sometimes I mess them up occasionally because I do about a billion of them a day. So it is what it is. Let's try one more. And hopefully I can get this one right and redeem myself. So in this case, I deal with the multiplication on the left first. 8 times 1. Then I do 8 times negative 6. Then I do negative 7 times 5. Then I do negative 7 times negative 6, and I get plus 42. You'll notice I didn't drop any, I didn't bring any signs down. I didn't automatically bring this minus down or bring this minus down or any of this stuff. It's much easier and more clean, or cleaner, should I say, um, if you just treat them as their negatives in the multiplication component. Then go back in and add them together as negatives later. Uh, so I deal with negative 48 minus 35. So it's going to be a negative. I'm going to go ahead and fix that so I don't make that mistake. The n's here, and I end up with negative 83n, I think. And then my 8 plus 42. So that looks like plus 50 to me. So let's see if I could get this one right. Yes. And the order, of course, since it's an addition question, doesn't really matter. Generally, this uh, program does it in whatever order it wants, but most of the time you end up with a variable term in first because they want it in standard form. Um, one more, because this is a, a decent example of one that looks tricky or can get a little weird. Um, when you have that negative in front of the parentheses, what it really means is just negative 1. And there's two ways you can deal with it. You can write the negative 1 there and do the multiplication. Or if you multiply a, a quantity in parentheses times a negative, 
uh, it just changes the sign of both the numbers. So if you can make that quick adaption, uh, adaptation in your head, you're in good shape. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 3 is plus 3x. Then you do 7 times 7, which is, of course, 49x. And then you do 7 times negative 7, which is minus 49. So my like terms are here. You get 51, or 52, I should say, when you work them out. And then you do negative 1 minus 49, which gives you negative 50. So let's see if I got this final one correct. And if not, I'm going to do one more to punish myself, and maybe you as well. Nope, I'm good. The 52x is positive, minus 50. So that's it. That should be all the setups that you're going to have to do. It's pretty simple. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to get them right. But once you get it right, it really will help you in when we get into equations and inequalities, which is the backbone of the first half of algebra. So good luck.